What's up everybody? You're here with the Fly Guy. Today we are going to be tying a great fly for a creek smallmouth bass. Really any bass that's in a creek, uh, spotted, largemouth, uh, it'll work on any of them. And it's very simple to tie and it is designed to be used on a drop shot rig on the fly rod. Uh, I've made a video on how to make uh, the drop shot rig on the fly rod. If you would like to see that, I'll put a link in the description for you. This fly was also featured in one of my previous YouTube videos, Creek Fly Fishing Adventure Part 2, Lower Creek. And in this video, you can see this fly catching smallmouth bass on one of my favorite streams. You can find the recipe for this fly at tfgflies.com. Make sure to subscribe to my blog while you're there. The hook that I'm using today uh, is a simple octopus style hook. Um, the hook that I typically use for this fly is an eagle claw octopus hook uh, in size 2 or larger. We are going to start by laying down a thread base. Make sure that you cover the hook completely. We will be using synthetic materials that tend to slip. So you want to make sure that you have adequate thread coverage. After laying down your thread base, we're going to actually attach a synthetic material called super hair and uh, at longer lengths this is a good substitution on clousers uh, or other streamers it's a synthetic material used by saltwater tires by keeping the fish hair short as you see here it has kind of a trapping quality and acts as a foul guard for those rubber legs you want them to move around wildly just not too much After wrapping that down, I add a little bit of super glue just to make sure that it doesn't spin and slip off the top of the hook shank. Now we're going to go ahead and attach our rubber legs. We're going to use three full length legs of olive, two of brown, and one of chartreuse. And these are going to be doubled over to produce a rubber legged tail. And that's the whole reason why I named it the J-Lo Bug. It's because the back end of this fly moves a lot. As you are wrapping down and back initially over top of these rubber or silicone legs, you want to make sure that you don't wrap too tight out of the gate. You want to make sure that you apply medium pressure and tension so that you don't actually cut through them uh, because that'll reduce the shelf life of your fly when you're fishing with it. After you get a decent uh, amount of wraps, medium tension over top of these legs you can go ahead and start wrapping down tightly and just make sure that you get good coverage and make sure there's a taper towards the front end of the fly after wrapping in your rubber legs it's time to go ahead and make the body and uh, the body is just made with an olive cactus chenille uh, tie it in off the back end of the fly make sure that as you are making your wraps uh, to make them tight and to stroke back fibers with your opposite hand so that you don't trap any fibers down and you get close wraps together making a full body. Uh, if you don't do this and you wrap over strands of the cactus chenille, it'll slip and cause gaps in your body and it just won't look very good. And it'll also affect the durability because fish teeth uh, can get in between there. When you wrap this towards the front of the hook, you wanna make sure that when you tie it off at the front, and finish this body up that you leave yourself a small space at the front of the hook eye so that you can tie off make a nice thread head and not actually tie any strands of the cactus chenille into your hook eye if you wrap it in too close it'll be really hard and difficult to get those strands out of the hook eye and it can compromise uh, your thread head up front so just leave yourself some space and your fly will look just fine after tying that off, go ahead and build up a small thread head, make it nice and clean. You'll whip finish, and it'll be time to make the head just a little bit more durable. So here what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our green nail polish. This is just going to be a base layer that shows through the next layer, and it just kind of gives it a mottled look. You'll go ahead and coat those threads with a you know sparse amount of the green nail polish. You'll let it dry. And then after that, you'll be ready for your, your brown or copper nail polish. 
Now this is a copper glitter nail polish, so it's semi-transparent, so it will reveal some of the green below, and that's the whole reason I use it. You'll do the same thing as you did with the green and go ahead and apply a coat. Trimming the fibers at an angle towards the back of the fly will help you in applying finish and it'll keep your finish from getting caught in the body of the fly rather than your thread head where you want it. After the brown dries, you'll go ahead and grab your UV resin. Uh, if you don't have UV resin, you can just use uh, Sally Hans's Hard as Nails. Uh, this will also work and it'll do just fine. Uh, I use UV resin just because um, I like the durability and I always use it in a lot of different fly patterns. So you're just going to apply a generous amount. This is the thick hard formula from Solares and I'll put a link in the description for you so you can uh, check this out and if you want to get it for yourself you can do it. After working around the UV resin and making it nice and uniform on top of your uh, nail polish that you've sealed your thread head with, uh, go ahead and hit it with your UV torch. Uh, don't cook it too long, but just cook it enough to make it nice and hard. And you are done. This fly is finished. You've got a drop shot fly that will catch you bass anywhere. You can size it up or down depending on your fishing situation and the size of the fish that you're targeting. Don't forget that if you want to see this fly in action, or if you want to see how to make a drop shot rig on the fly rod, uh, to check out the videos in the description below, uh, Creek Fly Fishing Adventure Part 2, and also how to make a drop shot rig on the fly rod. If you like this video, go ahead and hit thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more fly fishing and fly tying videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, and we'll catch you next time.